content delivery on a multicast channel uh, was straightforward. It got a little interesting when we looked at it from the roaming viewpoint. But uh, the delivery of uh, IPTV content over multicast is altogether at a different level because uh, there are so many options and uh, recognized uh, um, uh, functional modules which are all eligible for executing this uh, multicasting. So we will go through the functional models which have been recognized by the ITUT for NGN. Uh, so essentially, multicasting is uh, different from unicasting because uh, um, in unicasting, the content is being delivered from one source to one destination. But in uh, multicasting, it is one source to multiple destinations. Um, this actually means uh, that uh, are we going to uh, implement dedicated circuits from the source to the destination? Are we going to make copies of the packets and come up with uh, um, a, a tree that uh, is covering all the potential clients which are part of the multicast group? Uh, that is all we are going to discuss uh, in four different models. So the four different models are um, the multicasting uh, at the network layer. So it means it is the network multicast model. Then we have the um, uh, cluster model. Uh, then we have the peer-to-peer -peer model. In terms of complexity, in fact, peer-to-peer uh, -peer model uh, precedes cluster model because cluster model is more of uh, a um, uh, robust mechanism in which uh, the network service provider takes more responsibility. Then we can combine uh, the cluster and the peer-to-peer uh, -peer model to realize the fourth type. So let's look at the layered architecture of uh, the overall NGN framework in which we have the content provider, service provider, network provider, and end user. Now, these are four different domains or uh, different boundaries in which the equipment resides. If we look at the content provider, it is actually the application function server that hosts the content. Then service provider actually means that uh, it is the third party that is providing the services which actually has been developed by the content provider. And then we have the network provider it is actually the network operator. And then we have the end user equipment. If the multicasting is the responsibility of the network provider, it actually means that we are looking at the multicast transport function at the network layer. This means all the gateways, the routers, or the network equipment, which is deployed by the network provider will be responsible so we can call it more network centric or network based multicasting. The peer to peer one is uh, very simple in which we have a torrent like architecture where the individual users have their own uh, proprietary mechanisms which do not have any relationship with the network and they are executing this uh, multicasting by incorporating their own localized mechanisms. Then we have the cluster model. We call it cluster because uh, the service provider, which actually is uh, connected to the end user through the network provider, has content delivery and service functions dedicated for implementing multicasting. So it means now the infrastructure or the servers are uh, housed by the service provider. This actually is uh, more of a centralized architecture because here, the service provider is uh, providing the multicasting services to the end users in a centralized or a singular manner. Then we have the hybrid. Hybrid actually can take any form. It could actually even take the form of uh, uh, incorporating the end user equipment and the network provider equipment. But the network provider will not take that much of responsibility if the end user is already taking care of the multicasting. So combining the the hybrid model uh, combines actually the cluster and the peer-to-peer -peer model. So we can quickly go through all of these to, to fully understand the implications of 
using one over the other. So network multicasting is actually where the uh, network provider or the NGN provider uh, takes a lead role. Uh, this is going to be implemented on the networking equipment. So it, it actually uses multicast transport functions because uh, the engine architecture has the transport stratum and the service stratum. So um, uh, in that case, the end user equipment has to be uh, provided not only the connectivity, but also, also the multicast support uh, by registering uh, as, as, as a requester for the content with the NGN provider. This actually is implemented using a multicast uh, uh, group membership mechanism. Uh, known as uh, the uh, Internet uh, Group Management Protocol uh, proposed by the IETF. Um, there's another uh, uh, grouping mechanism uh, that actually is known as the uh, Multi Group Management Protocol. Uh, but uh, most of the time, the IETF IGMP is also uh, is mostly used. So IGMP is basically a uh, logical network that overlays on a physical network. So this allows a membership based uh, joining of uh, interested users in a certain content on a, sing on a single group. Uh, this could include uh, um, hosts and routers which may be physically spaced apart but they form a, uh, they form logical agency. Then uh, IPv6 also has an equivalent uh, because IGMP mostly works for IP version 4. So IPv6 uses the uh, multicast listener discovery mechanism. It's it's a listener service that uh, uh, runs on 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 a server and listens to all the requests which want these content and consequently allows these request uh, makers to join the multicast group. So uh, now, since we are talking about uh, the network, so there's a close relationship between the content delivery performance and the network performance. So the quality of network is going to greatly influence the quality of service of content delivery. So any uh, change in the network parameters is going to have a direct bearing on the um, content delivery performance as well. So uh, two terms quality of service and uh, quality of network are going to be dependent now. Uh, then we have the peer-to-peer -peer model. It's, it's very simple because uh, uh, the responsibility of uh, joining a group, uh, making a request for a certain content, um, uh, may, uh, activating the uh, streaming of the content, providing the content, getting the content are all managed by the user equipment. Uh, so uh, this involves uh, a lot of software defined functionality on the end user equipment. Once a particular peer uh, in a peer to peer network uh, has the content, it actually starts serving as a server for other peers. So it means the distribution is done um, in, in, a, in a peer to peer manner. It has its own advantages, but the most uh, uh, obvious advantage is at the decentralization at the cost of uh, compromise in terms of centralized management. So uh, the concept of peer-to-peer -peer, um, um, content delivery results into some kind of discovery mechanism uh, that, that is implemented, uh, if you recall, the BitTorrent architecture. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the peers which join a network and they form a kind of a distributed hash table based um, network in which each neighbor um, discovers another neighbor uh, uh, and uh, makes an explicit request for the content. So uh, the beauty of this actually has the flip side also because in the absence of a centralized server entity, we can have some compromise on the traffic quality uh, if a certain peer is available or not and subsequently the uh, concept of billing mo gets more complicated. Uh, then we have the cluster model. Uh, the cluster model actually heavily depends on the content uh, distribution function that is there in the service provider. And uh, this actually is based on servers 
So the capacity of the servers to accommodate a certain number of users is directly going to influence the overall experience of other users as well. Combining the cluster based approach, uh, which is centralized, and the peer to peer approach results in the best of the two worlds uh, resulting into a hybrid model. Uh, so the beauty about uh, hybrid model is that uh, the management is centralized, uh, the distribution is peer to peer, that results into a lot of scalability and robust control and a decent quality of QoS. So this is a quick recap to what we've already seen in terms of multicasting, peer-to-peer, -peer, cluster, and hybrid.